Imagine that a doctor is sitting across the table from you. You're just meeting this doctor for the first time. You're not sure whether she's a good doctor or a bad doctor. You can't tell if she has any morals or not. You're assessing things. And then the doctor tells you about one of the highlights of her year. With a smile on her face, she starts talking about one time a few months ago when she killed a clown. We're talking about a man dressed in full clown uniform, a red nose, who was giggling when he died. It was really important for him to be in his clown suit when he died, the doctor says to you. It was a wonderful thing. Now, at a basic human level, how would you react to that scenario? Would you run out of the doctor's office and call the police? Or would you congratulate the doctor because you're also a murderer who hates clowns? What would you do? At this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what's with all the hypothetical questions? This is crazy. I mean, what are the odds I'm going to be sitting face to face with a clown killing doctor? As it happens, if you live in Canada, it's not a hypothetical at all. Meet Dr. Stephanie Green. She's one of the country's leading physicians in the area of medical assistance in dying, or MAID. And she recently sat down for an interview in which she talks about um, the one time that she deliberately killed a clown. Now, I want you to watch the interviewer ask her about this and listen to her response. Notice the grins on these people's faces as they describe the death of this poor clown. Watch. Yeah. One of the things I absolutely loved was... Um, I mean, I have to admit to uh, welling up several times while reading the book. One Thank of the things about, about Ed, um, who was an amateur clown, and I think and he was having, you, you were going to be administering his assisted death, and I think you must have left the room or something, or he, he left the room and, and came back uh, dressed in his full clown regalia, including a red nose. And... Um, and you asked him what, what, what that was about, you know, why was it? And he, and he said that he wanted to go out laughing. Um, and I just thought that was so charming. But, but it does lead into the fact that from talking to you and other practitioners, um, it's become sort of socially accepted now that people are having assisted deaths. Everyone is so individual and what's important to one person may not be as important or differently, you know, important to someone else. So for Ed, it was really important that he be in his clown suit and, you know, have this atmosphere, uh, you know, with him at this final moment. And somebody else might find that ridiculous, but there's a there's a real beauty in recognizing that for for Ed, this was key and it was such a wonderful thing to be able to facilitate this with, with Ed. You know, for someone else, it, like you say, it might be an event with champagne. A wonderful thing to facilitate with a clown. So usually when you talk about facilitating something with a clown, you're talking about uh, inviting a clown to a birthday party, let's say. Uh, but in this case, she's talking about facilitating his execution. And that's one of the creepiest videos you'll ever see, but it's the cutting edge of state-run medicine in Canada. They are killing people, and they are celebrating it. Before we really get into things, let's, uh, let's review a, a few points. First, in Canada, doctors do not just execute the terminally ill, as awful as that alone would be. Thanks to a recent court decision and a new law in Canada, doctors can kill pretty much anyone. Watch the creepy clown-killing doctor explain the standard of care that determines who is actually eligible for execution now. Watch. Our law never required terminal illness. It never required a prognosis of six months. It always required originally that the patient be on a trajectory towards their natural death with no time limit around that, allowing more of a flexible clinical interpretation. But that, that un, even, even that was challenged because that wasn't in our original uh, constitutional decision by the Carter case. And so for three or four years after the law was passed, um, it was looked at in a provincial court, and it was decided that that also needed to be struck out of the law. And with the removal of that, it opened up uh, access to assisted dying for those who weren't uh, necessarily dying. A trajectory towards death is already an incredibly permissive standard for euth euthanasia, given the fact that we as mortal creatures are all on a trajectory towards death. I hate to tell you. But even that vague limitation has been lifted. Now there's basically no limitation at all. And that's why last year, a Canadian doctor named Joshua Tapper was able to, to authorize the killing of a 23-year-old man named Keanu. And why was Keanu killed? Well, according to the Substack Common Sense, Keanu was depressed, he was diabetic, and he had lost one vision, vision in one eye. And on top of that, he, quote, didn't have a girlfriend. 
On those grounds alone, the doctor authorized the state to kill Keanu. There are many more stories like this. There's Amir Farsoud, who was approved for maid because he was homeless. There's the army veteran Christine Gauthier, who was told by the Canadian government to consider euthanasia rather than endure the wait for a stair lift in her home. And so on. Many cases like this. Now, this is eugenics. It's the kind of thing the medical community thought long and hard about after World War II. Doctors wondered, you know, how do we make sure that medicine is never again used to kill the weakest and least desirable members of society? Well, doctors no longer ask that question. Eugenics is making a comeback. Why is that? If you look at this as a purely political issue, it, it, it makes sense. Several years ago, Canadian politicians realized that they had a big problem. The healthcare system, which they run, wasn't able to keep up with the need for organ donors. It's a big, big political problem. Thousands of people were dying, waiting for transplants. So the government set out to find new ways to get more organs. And that's when they passed the first law legalizing euthanasia. Now, if you think it sounds crazy to make this connection, well, the Canadian media drew this connection immediately. Here's a headline from the Ottawa Citizen in 2020, a few years after MAID was legalized. Quote, medically assisted deaths provide a, prove a growing boon to organ donation in Ontario. Very quickly, Canada became the world's leader in harvesting organs from MAID victims. According to the American Journal of Transplantation, doctors in Canada perform almost half of the world's organ transplants from MAID, uh, and they've done that over the past half decade. Ontario sets new records for organ donations every year. So, that's one political problem solved. Just like China harvests organs from prisoners, Canada harvests them from homeless people and the elderly. Euthanasia also solves financial problems. Back in 2017, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation ran an article raving about all the money the country could save by simply killing sick people outright. You know, to, to take care of sick people is expensive, but if you kill them, then you save a bunch of money, it turns out. Quote, New research suggests medically assisted dying could result in substantial savings across Canada's healthcare system. Doctor assisted death could reduce annual healthcare spending across the country by between $34.7 million and $136.8 million. The savings exceedingly outweigh the estimated $1.5 to $14.8 million in direct costs associated with implementing medically assisted dying. The article goes on to explain that it's very expensive to provide medical care to sick people and elderly people. The more frugal option is to give them a lethal injection. Problem solved. Who cares about human life anyway when there's money to be saved? Money to be saved and money to be made. The euthanasia industry is booming in Canada with entrepreneurs finding new and creative ways to get in on the action. As the CD CBC excitedly reported, funeral homes are expanding their brands to include medical assistance in dying. Customers can now take, the advantage, take advantage of the luxury sort of a full service option which means that instead of going to a funeral home after you die, you can go there to die. Think of the convenience. Watch. Welcome, follow me. Funeral homes have been in Mathieu Baker's family for generations, but he recently expanded the kind of service he offers. So this is the room where you have the medical aid in dying? Yes, this is, this is where it, uh, it happens. People who are approved for medical assistance in dying can come here with their doctor and loved ones to end their lives at a cost of at least $700. It's a lot of uh, organization uh, on, on our part to, to really make it a respectful and uh, meaningful event for, the, for that family. It's what Michel Brunel recently opted for. His family says he had emphysema and his quality of life had deteriorated, but he didn't want to die at home or in the hospital. They're using a room that they have already, uh, decorated it very nicely, uh, allowed us the time we needed to do what we had to do, to say goodbye, let him get comfortable. Uh, it's, just, it's just a beautiful option. Suicide rooms in funeral homes. This is real. This is actually happening right now. You know, and if you really want to increase efficiency, maybe they can even allow you to commit suicide while laying in your casket. Saving time, saving money, making money. That's what eugenics has always been about. The CEO of Innovation Refunds and GetRefunds.com has been on TV explaining how they've helped so many small businesses with their ERC tax refunds. They've completed thousands of returns for different kinds of businesses, including over $700 million for construction companies and over $200 million in restaurants, bars, and hotels. Innovation Refunds has hundreds of five-star Trustpilot and Google reviews. 
It's certified with the Better Business Bureau. In just eight minutes, you can easily start the process on GetRefunds.com. You could be up on your way to um, receiving up to $26,000 per employee. The ERC tax credit, it's not a loan. It's a refund of your already paid taxes. It's designed to let the business owner direct the refund money into anything the business needs to grow. It's money that you can use to improve your business however you see fit. So go to GetRefunds.com to start the process. There's no upfront charge. You don't get paid or they don't get paid until you get paid. Innovation Refunds has already helped clients claim over $5 billion in payroll tax refunds through the ERC, and they may be able to help your business too. So go to GetRefunds.com or download the app from the App Store today. That's GetRefunds.com today. You know, the first step in uh, growing up and being a real man is getting off your parents' phone plan. Getting your own cell phone plan gives you a sense of independence and responsibility. It's a step towards becoming more self-sufficient. By paying for your own finances, you learn how to budget and manage your money. There are a ton of cell phone providers out there. Unfortunately, most of them want to lock you into these contracts that tack on hidden fees at any chance they get. That's why I'm a big fan of Pure Talk. There are no contracts, no hassles. You can cancel at any time. It's very simple. Pure Talk is also giving you a free 5G Samsung Galaxy phone. When you sign up for the $55 per month unlimited plan plus hotspot today, they use the same nationwide networks as major carriers, so you get all the same coverage that you do, but a lot cheaper, a lot easier. Switching over to Pure Talk is so easy. You can make the switch, keep your cell phone, keep your phone number. With their U.S. customer service team, you can make the switch in as little as 10 minutes. Pure Talk is so sure you're going to love your service that they're backing it up with a 100% money-back guarantee. So go to puretalk.com, enter promo code Walsh to save 50% off your first month. That's puretalk.com, promo code Walsh. Pure Talk is simply smarter wireless. That's obviously not the entire explanation for what we're seeing. Every country has evil politicians who would kill innocent people for power, but Canada has much bigger problems, and its main problem is that it's a godless hellhole. One that's so far gone, the prime minister makes excuses for church burnings. Canadians, they don't believe in God anymore, at least not in the traditional sense. They believe that they are gods. They think that they can change their sex just by wishing for it. God doesn't choose whether you're male or female. You get to choose it. And you could change your sex in literally an instant. That's what they seriously believe. It's what everyone on the left believes. So it's only natural that a society like that would gradually assume more godlike powers, including the power to decide who dies and when they die. And just like with gender ideology, MAID is becoming a social media cult in Canada. Uh, Kids with obvious mental problems are posting TikToks with captions like, things my parents have had to come to terms with, their child choosing medical assistance and dying. Now, if we put the picture up on the screen and you just take a look at this person, your first reaction is that, you know, if you're a sane human being, your first reaction is that whoever that is, some sort of mental health intervention is obviously necessary for this person. Uh, But very quickly, that's becoming the minority position. Notice the 26,000 likes on that post. Okay, this is a young girl talking about how she's going to kill herself, and 26,000 people liked it. By the way, that girl who just yesterday set her uh, TikTok account to private has posted many times about her intention to take advantage of the MAID program. She She says that she has a chronic medical condition. Note, not terminal, but chronic And she also says that she has three, quote, incurable personality disorders. So to be be clear, doctors are going to kill this girl because, in part, her personality is disordered. There's many more social media posts like that. Here's a video of a woman celebrating that a physician is about to kill her grandmother. Watch. I came in quietly. I'd like to go up Are you nervous? Are you excited? How do you feel? Looking forward to it. Just putting an end to being dependent, no control. So as the day approaches, is it something you're thinking about every day? Or no. Just no. it's going to happen when no. it happens? Yeah. When I'll be ready, I'll know. Are you excited, Grandma, about your suicide? That was the question. And this is about as dark as it gets. And once again, these are not one-off videos. Millions of people support this, and not just on social media. More than 25% of Canadians in a poll now believe that the homeless and the poor should be able to access MAID. Nearly half of respondents think mental illness should be a justification for euthanasia. And that's about to be law in Canada. It's expected to be implemented in one year. Um, NPR would like to see that happen. They just ran a segment on someone named John Scully who wants to die uh, because of his mental illness. Listen. The expansion of medical assistance in dying to people with mental illness has been delayed by Canada's parliament for another year. The country already allows medically assisted death for some incurable illnesses. But as Emma Jacobs reports, mental health conditions are still up for debate. 
please note, this story does include discussion of suicide. For John Scully, life has literally become a living nightmare. When I wake up, I go, oh, God, I've got to stop it. I've got to stop it. I must uh, find a way to stop it. Scully lives in Toronto. He was diagnosed with depression more than 30 years ago and suffers from work-related PTSD and anxiety. He says he has terrible, vivid nightmares. There is no way to stop it. And because of that, I'm also permanently sleep deprived. He has been watching the progress of the expansion of medical assistance in dying, known by its acronym MAID, very closely. I actually physically got the paperwork for MAID. I have it right here. Canada's Medical Assistance in Dying program was made legally available to some adults with terminal illness in 2016. In 2021, it was expanded to include those suffering with serious and chronic physical conditions. But for many, the plan to extend this to those suffering with solely mental illness raised concerns. We don't have very good ways of defining incurability for um, mental health problems. Did you catch that? So they just need to figure out which mental illnesses are incurable. And once they figure that out, then they'll know which ones should be cured with suicide. This will be a reality soon enough. Suicide offered as a treatment for mental illness. Now, it used to be that you would go to a therapist to help you not kill yourself. In Canada, very soon, it may work the other way. And when you consider that 20% of adults supposedly have a mental illness, according to the people who are in charge of determining these things anyway, you begin to see how bleak this picture really is. If mental illness is a legitimate reason to execute somebody, then pretty soon um, we're all going to be eligible. Now, it's been easy for many people in this country to ignore MAID because for the most part, it's happening in Canada. But euthanasia is growing in popularity here too. In fact, just this month, the U.S. got its very first suicide tourism state. The Republican governor of Vermont signed a bill allowing euthanasia customers to come from anywhere in the country to be killed. They'll start putting that in their tourism ads. Hey, you want to kill yourself? Come to Vermont and do it. As always, culturally, we're on the same track and on the same train as Canada, heading over the same cliff. We're just maybe a few train cars back. As I said on Twitter the other day, um, I should not have to explain, nobody should have to explain, why it's bad for doctors to put human beings down like dogs. This is something that everybody should understand intuitively. If you don't understand it intuitively, there's something wrong with you, and you need to think about that. Because whatever you think of suicide, and if you have a soul, then what you, th- what you th- should think of suicide is that it's bad, and we should st- try to stop people from doing it. The point with euthanasia is that doctors are prescribing death as a treatment. It is a total inversion of the medical field. It is medicine doing literally the exact opposite of what it is meant to do. But medicine has been inverted in this way in our society for a long time. Euthanasia is just the latest iteration. Some of us have noticed this trend. Some of us, the so-called social conservatives, have been screaming about it from the rooftops for a long time, and we've been right all along. We have been right on every major cultural issue from abortion to gay marriage to gender ideology, and we're right about this too. Euthanasia is a dystopian abomination. It is a war on human life. It is a cancer. And like any cancer, it will never stay contained. It will never stop. It always spreads. It starts with euthanasia for the terminally ill, and very quickly it becomes euthanasia for 19-year-old girls with personality disorders. This is inevitable. It will always be this way. If you accept medical assistance in dying in principle, You are accepting everything that comes with it and everywhere that it leads. How long until MAID is mandatory for certain undesirable populations in Canada? How long until it's mandatory here? Now, you can laugh at that slippery slope hypothetical if you want. But the thing about slippery slope hypotheticals is that these days they have a funny habit of coming true. And I'll do it for this part of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.